And we are live. What's up, everybody? I am Glenn, your host of the uh, Six Digit Club Microblading Success Stories webinar. And I have a special guest for you today. I have Kerry B. Hello. Hey, everybody. Kerry B is here all the way from London. She came to help us out with the course this weekend with Master Claire. And we are, we've got an amazing webinar for you today. Would you like to know how Kerry B over here went from a job as a receptionist making $350 per week to her own business with a very successful microblading career doing 27 to 30, is that yeah, right? 27 to 30 per month. 27 to 30 treatments per month at 350 per treatment. Would you like to know? Well, you came to the right webinar. Here we go. Are you curious if a career in microblading might change your life? Well, let me welcome you to Six Digit Club Success Stories, where we feature interviews with our microblading students who are creating fulfilling careers and financial freedom they never had before. You'll learn how they started, how they achieved their success, and how you can follow in their footsteps. Join us and let's find out if a career in microblading is for you. Okay. So what's up, everybody? I'm Glenn, your host. And today we're talking with Carrie B. Carrie, thank you so much for coming and participating in the You're webinar. Welcome. You're much welcome. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Eric. So everybody, this is Carrie B. She's a very successful microblading artist all the way from London. She comes and visits us uh, every couple of months yeah. and participates in helping us teach the classes that we teach here. Yeah. And uh, I'm very excited to bring her story to you because she has an amazing story from here all the way to here and it's incredible and you're going to find out by the end of this webinar how she did it so if you stay tuned and you stay till the end that's my promise to you you're going to know how she did it because i'm going to ask her for you guys a um, couple of quick things if you have any questions during this webinar for those of you who are logged into the actual webinar you can type your questions right into the chat if you're watching this on social media on either facebook or youtube you can comment your questions and if you're getting something good out of this should they share it? Yes, please share. Please share the word and please spread the word because it's, it's very interesting and it's real and it's real. This is real. Yeah, we're going to give you the authentic story here. And uh, hopefully if you get some good value out of it, give Carrie some love. Tag her, hook her up. And yep. uh, you can, if you want to uh, follow Carrie, I'm going to show you real quick here. Let's show them your Instagram, okay? So you can follow Carrie at Carrie, it's Carrie B Beauty on Instagram. Okay, so Carrie B for beauty. Excuse me, that's yeah. gonna trick everybody. <laughs> it will. Carrie with two B's in a row. Basically. Carrie B as in boy <laughs> beauty. There you go. Yeah. Um, so anyway, can we just show them real quick for because the, there's gonna sure. be some people who are watching. They don't even yeah. know what microblading is. Right. Okay. You're gonna know now. <laughs> so let's let's show them super quick, and then we're gonna go back in time and help everybody understand how you created this successful. Yes. Uh, career for yourself. Yeah. So this here, what they're looking at is microblading. Can you describe this to them, what they're looking at for those who don't even know what it is? Right. So for those that don't know what this is, this is a good example of microblading. As you can see here, my client, she hardly had any eyebrows and this was due just to older age and loss of hair, which happens eventually to everybody. But she wanted obviously something natural to almost look like not an eyebrow tattoo, which microblading is. So it's literally a technique where it looks like hair strokes. And this is what the client came in asking for. She said, I want eyebrows that doesn't look like a big blot that looks realistic and mm. looks like it's hair stroke. And the most important thing was to her, the color. She wanted the color to look quite natural and blending with her hair. Um, as you can see here, she's quite like a blonde client. Mm -hmm. And this, these photos were instant. So at the moment it looks quite dark, mm -hmm. but they heal a lot lighter and softer in real life. Do you, do you have, million. do you have any, um, microblading and shading? Yes, here on, in, there yes? probably is right somewhere at the bottom. So all of these that we're looking at, these are just, these microblading. Are just microblading. Yeah. These are just microblading. Okay. So you can see here, this is how yeah. Carrie has created an amazing income for herself and a, and a lifestyle for herself. Yeah. It's around this service. And so if you'd like to take action on, uh, doing something with this yourself. If you're excited about what we're going to talk about today and you'd like to do something, you'll find a link in our uh, caption or somewhere around this video, which will lead you to a page where you can schedule a, um, a free 20 minute consultation with our very friendly staff. No pressure, no nothing. We just want to find out if a career in microblading is for you. Okay. But uh, Carrie, so you have built this career for yourself. I have. You do beautiful eyebrows. Thank you. Did you always do beautiful eyebrows? No. Hell no. I was, so how did this happen? So basically, um, I was. it all started being pretty fed up of my job. 
my full-time job. So I was a receptionist, actually. I was a receptionist working for a corporate um, building company um, and then residential estate. To me, I had no passion for the job at all. Mm -hmm. It was just a job. And it was Monday to Friday. It was long hours, as in 10 hours a day, not including travel time. An hour to get to work, an hour to get home. It was quite draining. And I thought to myself, do you know what? I need a new career. Okay, I'm not the best artist in the world, but I've always had a passion for beauty anyway. And then I come across microblading. And then I thought, this looks really interesting. Mm. And then I looked more into it. And then I realized, wow, you can actually have a career out of this. Like, how? So I did so much research. I found out about courses. Then what hit me was the prices of the course. I was a bit like, oh, that's a bit much. Oh, my gosh. How am I going to save that money? Um, I had bills coming out at the same time. You didn't, you say, you, did you have the money or you didn't have the I money? I didn't, actually. At the time, when I wanted to do, do the course, I didn't originally have the money. I had half, but not the whole lot. So then I thought, how am I going to get the money ASAP? Because this looks so attractive and I want to try it and give it a go. It looks amazing. Mm -hmm. So I asked my parents and I said, you know what? I'm confident that I'm going to do well in this, even though I haven't even started yet, but I'm confident that I can make a career out of this and I'll be able to pay back. And they were like, sure. Mm -hmm. And they borrowed me the money. So that's how I became to be able to afford the course. And I went ahead with it. Now, which you took the course, um, originally you took the online course? This was the live course, actually. The, oh, so you did a live course? I did. Okay, yeah. so just for those of you who are watching, a live mm -hmm. course is basically you come into um, one of our academies with one of our trainers, and what happens is you do an academic portion, and then the second day, you're doing an actual practical portion where you actually get to take this technique that you're learning on the first day, and you're working on a live model. You actually get to take... A, a tool the in your hand. The actual microblading tool. My and hands is like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bit intense the first time you do it, it is, right? It's a lot to take in, but it's so it's so worth it because you learn a lot and then it stays in over the next period of months because you're mm -hmm. still getting online support after the two days course. This is the, something that's very important, what she yeah. just mentioned, because you're not going to learn microblading in a day, in two no. days. You're not going to learn in 10 days. No. <laughs> you, you need practice. So how, a lot so, of practice. So how long did you practice for on average, like per day? On average per day, it wasn't much because of the long hours. I was in a full-time job, so it was only literally 20 minutes per day in the afternoon mm -hmm. until I realized, no, 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 this is not enough. I need to actually designate some time aside to practice because it was becoming really important. And I realized the more I practiced, the better I was getting. So mm -hmm. I thought, I need to find proper time for this. <laughs> so then I started doing half an hour every day to the 20 minutes and then I was getting even more better and I thought I want to get even more better at it and I need to I can work out what the problems are now so I was spending like an hour a day an hour a day max um practicing until I was literally doing it every day just to up my skills so so you had a job mm. where you're working how many hours 10 hours on site 10 hours per day 10 hours that's a yeah. that's a long day and As then a an hour to get there and an hour to get back home an hour so 12 we, hours out of my day oh my god <laughs> You're telling me you drove an hour in traffic. No, public transport, bus and train. You weren't even driving yourself. Like you're on public transportation, public transport. an hour going through the city, every day. fighting to yeah. just to get to this job. Literally. And you you did not enjoy the job. Not much. It was just. just oh my a job. god, that sounds so <laughs> miserable. It was draining. Uh, it was draining every day, Monday to Friday. Okay, so you were not happy. You were not happy. You were really motivated to find something else. Yeah, I needed something that would give me a drive um, and something that I found passion in uh -huh. and something that would actually um, give me more income as well. Okay. So were, yeah. did you have like, I don't know, are you an artist to begin with? Not really. To be fair, I've always had the creativity side of me in me because when I was in college and when I was in university, I did graphic design. So I always knew that that was my fun passion that I was really about, not really corporate. Mm. wasn't really for me. Um, so... But to do with drawing, I wasn't the best at drawing. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't the best artist out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when you looked at this, you thought, I could do this. Where yes. did that confidence come from? That confidence came from just doing research and seeing all the befores and after photos because there were so many. And then when I looked into the training and how intense it was, like everything looks broken down, mm -hmm. I thought – if I could learn this and follow it step by step, why would I not be able to achieve it? Mm -hmm. And I just saw it as just give it a go and take the risk and try. Mm -hmm. You never know. So once I had decided, do you know what, I can do it and just had that in my mind, although I was rubbish at the beginning, before you know it, I started to improve, improve, improve. And the course was really helpful because of that support after that actual physical life course. Okay. And did, yeah. you, did you ever have the... Like, did you, you never had clients before, like you never had your own business before. You never, 
you never, I mean, forget about taking a blade to someone's skin and actually doing, yeah. you know, permanent makeup or mm. tattoo type work. Yeah. But had you ever had your physical hands on someone providing some sort of a, a service that involves working with clients in, in that sort of intimate way? No, I didn't. <laughs> so it was pretty, everything was brand new to me. Brand new. Brand new and a bit scary. But then after that, it was nothing. Mm-hmm. I got used to it. I got confident. And that was out the window. And how, how long did it take you to start getting comfortable with what you were doing? It took me probably a few months, probably a few months to get confident. It took me mm-hmm. a while to get confident. But once I was there, I just forgot about my nerves straight away. Mm-hmm. And yeah. what, what, what are the feelings like in the beginning when, when you're not feeling confident, when you're just, you know, you're trying to work this thing out and trying mm-hmm. to get there, but you're not exactly there yet? What, is it, what does it feel like emotionally? It feels quite... Cool. It feels quite like sad and sometimes I like knock myself down and like feel like I'm not getting anywhere because my stroke patterns are not the best. So it kind of, I'd knock my own confidence out the window when really I should have just been saying, come on, you're, you're getting better, Kerry. Just keep practicing mm. and then you're going to see you improve. And once I realized that was the case, I just was more in a positive energy throughout the whole practicing process and learning process. And I was patient with waiting for clients to come. I knew it would happen over a period of time. The better mm-hmm. I get, the more clients I'm going to attract. So once that was embedded in my mind and my mindset changed and I believed in myself, everything just started to flow, flow and get better. And yeah, better. I can better imagine. That must have been a big switch for you. It was a big transition. Yeah. yeah. Any, anything that you're going to do, if you're mm-hmm. going to you know, try to do something new, you, yeah. you have to go through this period where... It's a process, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where, you, where you feel like a fish out of water in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> that in anything that you're going to do, yeah. it doesn't matter if it's microblading or any career, yeah. but certainly this microblading career, like aside from the financial rewards, mm. can you describe what the experience is like today? Cause we're going to get into like yeah. how you actually did it. Cause I'm sure okay. a lot of people who are watching, they're like, yeah. how did she do this? Yeah. How did she go from a receptionist with no experience, mm. no clients, never mm. doing something like this before mm. to now having a business with 27 to 30 procedures a month. How did yep. you do that? We'll get into that. Don't worry. We'll not forget to ask those questions. But <clears throat> what I'd like to know is what, aside from the financial rewards, what is like, um, like, are, are you fulfilled with the work that you do today? Or is it still just a job that you don't like and you're just doing it for the money? Like describe that part of it. That is the most important part for me besides the money. It's the actual satisfaction that I have every single time I do a client. To bring, For me to like bring a smile on someone else's face, it actually makes me feel good, not just all the way at the end of the day, at that moment with the client, to know that I've done a good job, they're happy with it, I put a smile on someone else's face and they can leave with it and it's like on their face. It's like a big thing. So the feeling of this new career that I've created is just like so satisfying and this is nothing to do with the money. This is just a feel good factor. So every time I've like finished the job and get great pictures out and they love it, I get compliments and it just makes me feel really good. So it's more than just a job. I just don't even see it as a job no more. I just feel like I wake up every day doing something that I enjoy, doing something I love doing and making other people happy. So when I see my clients happy, smiles on their face, it just boosts my my happiness and makes me feel even more happy. So that is the most important thing which I was striving for career-wise. It was just to have a passion for what I do. Can you can you yeah. share with us like um, maybe a, a story or two mm-hmm. of a of a client mm-hmm. that who had a you know some sort of a profound experience with you? Yeah. That where there was, you know, emotionally moving for you? Yeah. It was um, going back, I think it was last year, I had my first client who had alopecia and it was like, oh my gosh, I really felt sorry for her. And I could imagine what she was going through because she had literally had no eyebrows at all. It was like very smooth. And to me, it was a shock because I was like, okay, how long no do I hair at all. No hair. There's no and, shape and, to work and, with. Yeah. And so you, you had never done someone <laughs> no. that had no hair at all. No, I've never so you had that. to literally create their eyebrow from yeah, scratch. From scratch. Yeah. Okay. So that was a little intimidating even to you. Yeah. It was like, challenge <laughs> but once once I just put that challenge out of the way and just continue doing the normal process as in mapping out where the points are drawing the brows showing her she loved the shape I just continued doing the normal technique and then it came out amazing and instantly it was life-changing visually to her appearance and she was so over the moon and I was so proud of myself I was like that came out great considering she's got no hair um she started to pour her eyes out with tears happy tears obviously and um that was quite touching to me like doing somebody that literally had no hair to giving them full eyebrows that was the massive most biggest transition I've ever like done myself and seen so that was a happy moment wow that's, yeah. that's really cool it was yeah. what a cool thing to be able to have a career where you yeah. can make good money yep where you can have the 
the independence because mm-hmm. it's your it's your own business. It is. So it is. you decide what time you show up for work. You yep. decide whether you're going to work, you know, more, work less. Yeah, I love um, that. it's very flexible. Yeah. When you say flexible, how mm-hmm. is it? How do you uh, use that flexibility yourself in your own life? So basically, like, do you work like a regular schedule, or is it no. you move it around? How does I it move work? it around. So I wanted to break out of the whole nine to five routine. So I never do clients at 9 a.m. unless I choose to or the client like asks me to. She needs an early appointment. Then I'll start at 9. But I start at 10 a.m. to avoid the 9. And I literally sometimes... Oh, so you don't have to get stuck in rush hour. No, exactly. How, how long is your commute now? So my commute now is half the time. It takes about 25 minutes to get to the salon that I'm at. Because you're not fighting rush hour traffic. No, I'm not fighting rush hour oh, traffic. That's clever. I'm coming in later. Um, get more beauty Clever. sleep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I start at 10 now and then sometimes I'll have like a huge break during the day because the, some clients are working and then I'll even do late evening appointments. So I might start late at 4 PM and go on to about 6 30 or even 7 PM. Mm-hmm. And that's in my control. And I can even work weekends if, if I want to rack in more clients. Um, but then I have the flexibility to not work weekends to spend time with family and friends because I don't always believe it's about working to the ground until you're tired because then you're not at your best. So I just like to do as much clients during the week as I can, but spread them out and pick the times that I want. Obviously I negotiate what's best for the client first, but um, it's much more flexible in that way where I can choose what days I want off, what days I want to work, what time I want to start, what time I want to finish. So it's super flexible, super flexible. Did you ever imagine that you'd be in a position like this? No, to be honest, about three years ago, I could never imagine it. Never. So it's like life changing. Wow. Life changing. That's so cool. Yeah. So um, I'm sure a lot of people want to know how you did this. So yes. I have to I have to ask some of these questions. That's fine. <laughs> so let's start from, because a lot of people who watch this, mm-hmm. uh, th- these webinars that we do, yeah. they're um, at the stage where they're maybe, you know, maybe you're watching this, you're thinking you'd like to do something like this. Yeah. And you're, you're maybe intimidated, like, well, how do you even get started? If like in Carrie's yeah. case, she didn't have any clients. She literally started, zero. you started from zero, 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 zero. 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 Nobody knew about me and nobody okay. even knew I was. So classic. summarize real quick. You took the course. You went to a yeah. live course. Yes. What did you do, do next? Summarize like the first two to three months. So the first two to three months, um, it was quite quiet client wise, obviously, because I'm just a beginner at the beginning stages. So I thought, right, I need to, as well as I'm practice on the practice mats, I needed to actually practice on models. So I thought, let me just put it out there that, look, I'm new to this um, Michael Bain career. Yeah. Here's my work. Um, and I just started to do people for like near to nothing, literally half price. Um, and what, what was half price back half then? Half price was £150. And that was for their first treatment and top up because I didn't really want to charge the top rate when I wasn't very confident in my skills. And yet. where would you do this? So I would advertise on Instagram and I would advertise on Groupon, and then I was getting some clients mm-hmm. coming through, and even on Facebook, actually. You would somewhere. advertise, like paid advertising? No, just this was just normal advertising at the beginning. So free? Yeah. Just free market? Okay, so... Yeah, literally. I, I define, <laughs> when I say the word advertising, I think in terms of something that's paid, mm. and when I think of um, free, I think marketing. Right. So, excuse me, so you were putting out posts, mm. making sure the world knows what you're doing. Yeah but you weren't actually boosting the post. You weren't putting no. money behind the post. Not yet. Okay. Mm. Just, I want to make sure that that's clear to everybody because they yeah. may be thinking, they hear advertising, they may be thinking you were paying no. for advertising, but you weren't. No. Okay. All right. So go ahead. Yeah. So once I started doing that, I did get a few models that were interested. So they'll email me or call me. And people you knew or people you didn't these know? These are people that I didn't know. These are mm-hmm. people that I didn't know. So um, I was quite nervous, but I took them in and I practiced on them. And to somewhat, they were quite happy with with what they got. And they knew you that you were relatively new. They did. I let them know. So I showed them my certificate. I showed them what I was qualified and who I qualified with. And they knew all of that. And that just gave them the confidence to let me do them. That's what I was going to ask you about, because somebody might be watching this and they're thinking, okay, you got a couple of clients, but Mm. how, how would you get clients at that early stage? If Mm. you don't feel like you have before and after pictures, you don't have Mm. a nice portfolio, you don't have Mm. much to work with. What did you rely on to establish your credibility and to give your potential clients at that time when you were really new, the confidence that they could trust you to do this? So basically, it was just my qualification. Once I spread the word and showed them my certificate, and once they came to the salon and was able to see my certificates on the wall, they kind of knew about who I've trained with. And with that, they were confident already. So I wasn't Mm -hmm. too scared about, I haven't got a ton of pictures to show you because they were already confident 
with who's actually trained me. So that mm. wasn't really too much of a problem. So you emphasized your education for yeah. your credibility. So yeah. before you had, so you didn't even have before and after pictures at that point. No, no, I didn't. You didn't really have anything. No, no. So what you relied upon is you told them that how mm. educated you were and the, yeah. the quality of the education you received, that's yeah. what they should put their confidence in, yeah. basically. And I went through the whole process of how it took me to get qualified because it isn't quite easy. You have to put in a lot of work. That's right. And there's stages and levels. So once I explained that, they were like, wow, that's quite thorough and hard work. So they okay. understood. So let me just take a quick second. For mm. those of you who are watching this, you're thinking this might be something you want to do. Just so you yeah. understand what Carrie's referring to. When you mm. take the course, okay, you've got multiple levels as you learn the building blocks of uh, the microblading procedure or the, mm. the treatment, okay? And so you first learn how to literally hold the tool that's, you know, that's part of the, what you need to learn. And it's in part of the level. Once you learn how to do the, the, the beginning strokes, you know, the strokes in the head of the brow, once you learn this and you demonstrate that you've mastered this, you're, tr you're communicating back and forth with your trainer through this app that we have. And then once you're authorized to move on to the next level, now you start working on the next part of the brow. And if, proceeds like this Actually, until yeah. you, you know, these are the building blocks of how to do the procedure. You don't learn the whole thing at once. Mm -hmm. You learn it in sections, this, this, and then finally at the end, it culminates in you. Uh, your challenge at the very end is to actually take everything that you've learned yeah. and work on a live model and then share mm -hmm. the photos, the before and after photos of your experience working on a live model to your trainer. And then your trainer either authorizes you mm -hmm. to, you know, that you've graduated the, the course or to, you know, you need to work on this, you need to work on yeah. that. Some people do it in their first, did you do it in your first model? No, I didn't actually, it was on my second model. Okay, so some people <laughs> take one, two, th yeah. some people take five models, Yeah. okay? It doesn't matter how fast you get there. Some We have some people who are just like ridiculous. They, I didn't want to tell you how fast they went because it'll be yeah. intimidating for some people, but some people go through fast and mm -hmm. some people take a long time. A long time, yeah. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It matters that you arrive matters that you yeah. reach the standard. And that's why we have a standard. And that's, that is established as you go through the various levels of the course, Correct. because yeah. you can't pass through all these levels until you demonstrate to your trainer mm. that you've mastered the lesson at that particular level. Yeah. And so you put all the mastery of each of those lessons together. And by the time you get to the end, you're ready to work on somebody yeah. like Kerry was emphasizing the value of her education, how rigorous the training was. Mm. You're, re you're pretty thoroughly prepared at that point. You are by then. You yeah. Are. Now, of course, it's going to be intimidating and, and yeah. it's pretty intense when you make that leap from the practice latex yeah. to working on, on a real person. Model, yeah. uh, but you you have to put faith in yourself that you're, you've yeah. been prepared yeah. and you have to trust the curriculum, trust yeah. that your trainer has given you the authorization to go ahead and do it. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so if you put trust in the system, that's how you get to the next level. But anyway, yeah. I interrupted. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, Carrie, so yeah. please tell us. So you, you started working on some models. Yes. You started getting some customers. Yes. What did you do then? So then after then, I realized that my skills were getting better after a few months and after doing models and I was asking some feedback from my clients. So then I slowly upped the price, mm -hmm. not to the full price, but just upped it so that it was nearly the full price. And then I thought, you know what? I need to spread the word even more. So then I was telling friends to tell people. So word of mouth was spreading. You became more confident yeah, about I really became, sharing yeah. it. You kind of did it not necessarily on the down low, but no. not like full. Yeah, I didn't go full in at the beginning, but afterwards I thought, you know what, I need to go full in now because people need to know about me and I need to do more clients. Yeah. So word of mouth started spreading. Um, I got myself on other platforms such as Groupon and Facebook. I was literally going on every single place that I could advertise, and especially Instagram. I didn't have an Instagram back then, but I thought I need to advertise on Instagram now. And I need Is to Instagram as popular in England as it is here? Oh, yeah, States? very. And do you get a lot of customers today from Instagram? Yeah, still. Okay. So, so I just want to like bring this up for DM everybody. Message. Oh, so people DM you looking yeah. for, yeah, let's just bring this up so people can see. We'll, we'll sort of click through this uh, while we're talking. But so you, you post a lot now on social media. You have a, a, a great portfolio of work that you demonstrate. Yeah. What are you doing here? What is this? Practicing. <laughs> but what's, I was the what's the timer? I was just trying to see how fast I could practice because at the beginning I was really, really super slow. I was like uh, taking my whole time to do one whole eyebrow and I thought, do mm -hmm. you know what? I need to speed up. So let me do my own challenge and uh, very time clever. <laughs> and you know what's amazing for, for those of you thinking about doing this, like just a, a post like this is, is powerful marketing content. Mm, yeah. Really powerful. People, mm. you know, sort of get 
you know, they're interested in, in uh, if they're interested in getting the um, procedure, they're mm-hmm. interested in not just looking at before and after pictures, but they yeah. want to get to know you. They want to get, yeah. they want to see you practicing. They want to see you doing the procedure. Yeah. Look at this work. This is just amazing. Really awesome. Yeah. Wow. That's hard to work with because this person didn't have anything. Barely anything. Nothing. Barely anything. Is, was this an alopecia client or this is? This was just no extreme. Someone just really extremely just. Extremely, extremely hairless. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Really, really good. You've gotten so good at this. So this, for, for those of you, you're watching, you don't know what this is. Like, mm. is this what the person ends up with? No. <laughs> Definitely not. No. It's extra it's if you want the dots. Would yeah. you like the upgrade to the dots? It's, it's an extra 50 wipeable. pounds. Literally. It's all wipeable. This all wipes off. This is just the pencil drawing, mapping out, and then a medical pen, which is just showing the dots. Right. So she frames up the whole shape yeah, of the brow so framing. that she knows where to put the actual microbladed strokes. Look at this. Wow. It looks so natural. Yeah. But look, look what she started out with. And, and it's just, it's so subtle. Mm. It's so subtle that you almost don't even notice it, but it, what a, what a difference it makes. Yeah. These pictures are so cool when you have somebody who's like really pretty eyes. Yeah. Like I know. Really, it just pops. <laughs> it pops, you know. It does. So neat. Yeah. And you actually had, is that a, um, is this a, vi- uh, is this a video? Yeah. Oh, so there's a video of you actually working. Yeah. Oh, this is you from this weekend. Yeah, oh. it was actually. <laughs> so here out. you were te- you were teaching. Yeah, helping out teaching and mapping out the eyebrows there. What were you showing her here? Just how to secure the line because the shape is everything. You've mm-hmm. got to have a good shape before you even start microblading. Mm-hmm. So that's what was going over there. Yeah. You like teaching? Yeah. It's really fun. Is it fun? Yeah, it's really fun. What do you like about it? I just like sharing the knowledge. And because I've been in the student's shoes... Mm-hmm. I feel like I can relate like 10 times and motivate quite really well. And it's nice to just like share and see your actual student do really well and like pick it it's up. It's fulfilling, really right? It's, it's fulfilling. It's the yeah. same as doing eyebrows. It's so fulfilling. It's like so you, you, you made a contribution to somebody, Yeah, you know, yeah. and yeah, that's yeah. really cool. This, this one here, by the way, this, this, pad, this one. Yeah. What a difference. Oh my God. <laughs> From bushy to... Because nice she actually has great, great eyebrow hair to work with. She does. Right? She does. It's, it's a bit messy mm. and it needs to be um, uh, groomed, I guess yeah. you could say, and controlled. But you did a beautiful job and it's yeah. you can't even... Like these are microbladed strokes down mm. here. Somebody who doesn't know what microblading is wouldn't even... You can barely see yeah, the microbladed strokes through here. Some people can the difference. <laughs> yeah, because it looks just so perfect. Yeah. Really nice. You do such good work. Thank you. So, so life has really changed quite a bit, huh? Yes. Yes. In a good way. <laughs> so you can, so how long you've been doing it now? So now this is just coming up to three years, three years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so now what is, what do you really kind of do at this point to mm-hmm. get business? How does it work? What, what's your week or your day filled with? What do you do? So basically most of my week is doing microblading. Um, I work about five days a week now, um, which is normally on Mondays, Tuesdays, I normally have midweek off completely just to, you know, relax and go to the gym and keep my health up, visit family and friends. And then the rest of the week, again, is just microblading. So I would either do like Thursday, Friday or Fridays and Saturdays. Mm. Um, but like I said, I'll always have some time off during the day to myself, which is like either midday or really early in the morning. Mm. Sometimes I'm, I'm an active person, so I'm always in the gym. If not, then I'm still continuously practicing because I realize no matter what, practicing is a must to keep up. You should never like drop practice in like practice makes perfect, as mm-hmm. they say. So that's my day to day routine, really. Yeah. Wow. What an amazing transformation yeah. from yep. work as a receptionist, yeah. working for somebody else, mm. slaving away, basically a lot of hours. fighting terrible traffic on yeah. public transportation. Like just, yeah, that doesn't sound like yeah. fun at all. I'm never exhausted anymore. I'm always energetic. It's lovely to meet new people as well. And some of my clients, they even want to keep in contact mm-hmm. with me and like gifts and all of this stuff. But it, it's life changing. You get to meet yeah. so much lovely people and do fantastic work. This girl is the yeah. opposite of exhausted. Let me tell you. I'm folks. not exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, congratulations. Yeah. I'm super excited Thank for you. you. Thank you for coming and helping with us uh, this weekend. Thank you for yeah. doing the webinar. And Thank you. for those of you who are, again, if you're excited about what's going on here, you want to take some action, you'll find a link somewhere in the caption to this video where you can find us, you can get in touch with our team. We'll have a very 
friendly conversation with you. No pressure. We'll figure out if a career in microblading is for you. We'll fill you in on all the options, how it works, the online course, the advanced course, the basic yeah. course, all this different stuff that we do. Um, if you want to follow Kerry, it's Kerry B as in boy <laughs> exactly. beauty. So Kerry B beauty that's on Instagram. Okay. Yeah. That's where you can find Kerry. And we'll, we'll leave the, the links for if yeah. they want to find you and, and catch up with you uh, somewhere around this video. So Kerry, thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. You're the best. <laughs> really you. appreciate it. Thank you. All right. We'll see you guys. See you soon.